It's P to the F to the J, plastic free July, okay? Hi guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to EcoBoost. My name is Kate Arnell. If you are new here, then welcome. I'm not sure how you found me, but I'm glad you did. Stick around, hopefully we're gonna have some fun. If you're a regular viewer and you've already hit that subscribe button, then thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm genuinely, genuinely thankful. So I thought I'd sit down and do a little roundup from Plastic Free July, which seems like ages ago. In fact, it was ages ago. I've just been a bit rubbish at getting around to filming this. So um, I thought I'd share with you some of the things that worked really well and that I've continued doing, and also some of the things that didn't work quite so well. So let's crack on with my Plastic Free July, uh, the results. Ooh. If you want a little reminder, or maybe you missed the Plastic Free July challenge video, then uh, I'll put a little clip of it right here. You can click that, or I'll put it in the description box below so you can click that and sort of get up to speed on the items that I was hoping to swap out or the changes that I was hoping to make. Otherwise, the rest of this video might not make a right lot of sense. But it might. But it might not. But it might. But it probably, it probably won't. So here are the things that worked really well. Let's start on a high um, and... <laughs> work our way down. These are the alternative for microfiber cloths that I found. They're by a brand called EcoEgg and they're made from 100% natural wood fiber and I really enjoyed using these, probably more than is acceptable, especially considering I really don't enjoy cleaning. So there's a little video on their website that actually demonstrates just how sort of absorbent these are. I've mostly found I don't really need to use a cleaning product with these, I can just use water and it does a great job, but then occasionally if I really need to do a proper clean on the surface, I'll use a little bit of either washing up liquid or um, diluted white vinegar. These actually looked pretty solid when they turned up. Obviously they soften once you run them under some water and then after you wash them and stuff they still stay sort of pretty floppy so they're only rigid when they turn up but they chill out a little bit once you get to know them. You may remember that they actually turned up in plastic pouches um, which was a little bit of a wah, wah, wah moment of I haven't even started Plastic Free July yet and already I'm bringing in more plastic by trying to make swaps. So I emailed the guys at Eco Egg just to ask them about their plastic packaging and whether they would consider changing it and they very sweetly got back to me. Um, I've now been advised that the packaging for the Eco Egg wood fibre cloth is temporary and going forward they will be supplied in a cardboard sleeve which will be from sustainable sources and recyclable. It's awesome that they were already on it but I'm hoping that my email maybe just sort of confirmed that there is a demand out there for cloths with no plastic packaging. I also mentioned I was going to use these organic cloths. Uh, they're by the organic company. They make things like aprons and oven gloves, dishcloths, etc. With these, I do feel like I probably need to use a little bit of um, eco-friendly washing up liquid or a little bit of white vinegar and water um, as a cleaning product just to make sure the surfaces are really clean. These probably aren't as absorbent as the eco egg cloths but I've really enjoyed using them. They're sort of halfway between a tea towel and a dishcloth. I did also consider knitting my own dishcloth but I'm not a good knitter. I've, I can barely, barely do a very basic, I wouldn't even call it a scarf, it's just a sort of long thing. And I watched a few YouTube videos about it and in the end, I just thought, I don't know if I've got enough passion to make a knitted dishcloth. I also didn't cut up any towels because I actually didn't need to cut up any towels to make them. So yeah. So another item you might remember that turned up in plastic packaging were my eco sacks. So these were the replacements for my bin liners. I used to use kind of whatever I had to hand. So whether it was an old paper bag from a Whole Foods shop or sometimes degradable plastic bag, but I never felt that comfortable using those because it's still kind of plastic, it just has an additive in it to help it break down faster. But if I reused a paper bag that was normally made from sort of recycled brown paper, that wasn't very good at withstanding any sort of moisture. These have been brilliant. I'm so smitten with the eco sack. I think the size that I chose was perhaps a little bit too big. They do a 10 litre one, which is what I'm going to go for next time, but these are the 25 litre caddies. And because like 95% of what we throw out is like organic waste and food scraps etc that can't be composted, then I usually put them into the bin. And organic waste starts to smell a little after a few days. I think if I go for a smaller bag then I won't have to let this sort of sit there and wait until it fills up to throw it out. They haven't 
shredded or weakened at any moisture they are very sturdy and it's because they're made from wood flakes from FSC certified uh, forests in Scandinavia and it's a byproduct of that industry and because they're not recycled it means the fibres are really strong and can withstand moisture. So those were another excellent choice but as I said they did turn up in plastic. So I pinged out a little email just basically saying that I was really excited to try the product but I was naturally a bit disappointed that it turned up in plastic especially seeing as I was trying to avoid plastic and that's why I ordered the product. Again I got a response it says uh, thank you for your email we quite understand your point if we sent your order via courier as one parcel, it would be wrapped in a cut-up paper sack. However, it's cheaper to send in two packages via Royal Mail. Unfortunately, these days we have to succumb to market forces and try to be competitive or we wouldn't be in business. Sad, really, I know. The strapping we can't really get away from or your order would never make it in one piece. If you ordered more than 50 of the liners you bought, it would definitely go via courier and we wouldn't use the polythene sleeves as anything over 50 won't split down to the weights allowed by Royal Mail. Hope that helps Kate, we do try very hard not to use anything we don't have to and if we can reuse a box or anything we will do. I like that they explained exactly why they made certain choices and I think if you are a small company then I think sometimes you do have to make sacrifices. The plastic braces that they come in at the moment it says that that's their only option. I'd love for them to find a sort of sturdy card alternative, so I'll see if I can maybe reply and see if that would be an option for them. But I totally get that as a small business, sometimes you do have to make compromises. Yeah, I'm really happy with the Eco Sacks, and they have been such a success. I'm, there's a pun there somewhere. A success. There it is, shampoo. Whoa. So I gave myself a couple of alternatives when it came to shampoo. Previously I was using a brand called Rawa, it was lovely and non-toxic and used organic ingredients but it did come in plastic. It also worked really well on my hair so that was another great thing about it. A lovely person in the comments suggested a brand called Away and it turns out that there's a salon selling Away very close to me. They come in glass amber jars and it does have a plastic pump but I'm hoping that I can take this back and maybe just refill from their larger sizes if they have larger sizes. If they can't refill it for me at the salon that maybe, maybe at least they'll sell a refill without the pump but just maybe a, a plastic lid or something um, because I really enjoyed using this. I got this in July and I mean it's still going. We've still got about a fifth of the bottle left. So that's July, August, September, October. That's four and a half months and we've still got a fifth of the bottle left. And like I've said before, I only need to wash my hair probably every third or fourth day, fifth day at a push. So I don't wash my hair every day, which is probably why it has lasted so long as well. They are the sort of brand that does take into consideration their packaging quite a lot. So they use things like metal tubes instead of plastic tubes and most of their products otherwise come in glass jars. So that's Away. I've lost the label somewhere along the Away and uh, I've really enjoyed using it. My other shampoo option was a shampoo bar. Now I've had mixed experiences with shampoo bars in the past. Mostly they haven't worked that well, but I thought I'm up for giving them another go during Plastic Free July because it might be that I just wasn't using it properly. So this time around I did some proper research, I read some instructions on the website where I got these from about how to best use a shampoo bar. And I have to say, they definitely worked a lot better than I expected. The first time I used it, it was fine. I just left a little bit in around the back of my hair that felt a bit textured, which was no biggie because with short hair, I think sometimes you kind of need to put in either a bit of a styling product or give it some texture. The second time, I'm not quite sure what happened, but I ended up looking like Medusa or something. I was definitely defying gravity, let's just say that. So I went back, I did a little bit more reading and I noticed that a lot of shampoo bars are then sold alongside an apple cider vinegar rinse or conditioner. And I thought, well, why not give that a go? So I diluted some apple cider vinegar um, with some water. It was about one part apple cider vinegar to about three parts water. And I tried that as a rinse after I'd used this and it definitely improved the feel of my hair. Like it definitely got rid of most of the residue. I haven't used these as much as I would like to and I still just use them sporadically. But at the same time, I've really enjoyed using uh, this, so. 
I don't know. I'm gonna keep going with both of them. I quite like having the option and mixing it up a little bit. I also found this shampoo bar the other day, actually. I went to Camden for the first time in ages, had a little look around the market, and there was a stall there called Read the Label, and he had two sort of vat for liquid soap, so you could basically bring a container and fill it up with liquid soap or buy his one and then bring it back and refill it. So that caught my eye first. I was like, oh, that's a great zero waste option. It used organic ingredients, it was completely natural. And whilst I was there, I thought, well, I may as well ask if he's got a shampoo bar. And he did. I haven't used this yet as a shampoo bar, but I'm excited to give it a go. I think I bought a lip balm in a little stainless steel tin and something else. What else did I get? Oh yeah, a bar of unpackaged soap, which was nettle soap. He had so many to choose from though. I also decided to stop using the plastic bags that the council sends through for our mixed recycling curb collection. And instead I've been collecting all of the things that would have gone into those bags and I've just put them in either a box or another sort of reusable bag or whatever. Anything I could sort of carry them in to take three streets away to a little recycling depot there. And that has worked like a charm. Something I should have thought of a long time ago, but better late than never. So hooray, that was another win. Now it's time to talk about the things that didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. First up, washing up liquid. So I was hoping to make my own from these organic soap nuts, which I ordered online, and they actually came in just a paper bag, so they didn't come in any plastic packaging. I know some people use these for laundry. I have tried them in the past for laundry, and they just didn't work that well for us. It's probably something to do with living in London, in a hard water area or something, but I know so many people have such a huge success with these. Anyway, when it comes to um, laundry and stuff like that, we actually just buy a very large paper bag filled with Eco for Zero stuff, and that seems to work well for us at the moment, so that isn't contributing towards my plastic quota. But washing up liquid was, because I was buying it in recyclable plastic bottles, normally by a brand called BioD, which does do some refills, like I've seen one down in Cornwall, and I haven't seen them in many other places in London, or any places in London. So if you know of a BioD refill in London, please let me know. But anyway, back to the soap nuts, I tried making my own washing up liquid, and it sort of worked a little bit in that it cleaned the dishes. It probably didn't clean them as thoroughly as we're used to, but the weird thing about these with making washing up liquid was that the liquid smelled weird. It smelled slightly eggy slash, I want to say farty. I want to say farty. It smelled slightly like someone had farted in the kitchen. And I feel really bad saying that because I had such high hopes for these and I know these work for so many other people. So I don't know what it is about this location or whatever it is. So we did try a whole bottle, in fact, two bottles. I made two bottles using soap nuts. And yeah, I think after that we realized that it probably wasn't something that we were going to continue. But, oh gosh, they're going everywhere. No guys. I know I'm not being mean, come back! I think moving forward I'm just going to start using an Ecova refill and I just found one the other day at a store called As Nature Intended. They've got a couple of locations in London, they have some great uh, bulk offerings so if you want to get any dry goods in bulk they've got that as an option and they also have the Ecova refills. Any three, two, one. Ta-da! Dishwasher tablets! I've realised recently that during my grandmother's time, when she was a young woman, dishwashers didn't exist. They just washed the dishes by hand. So to try and find a natural and homemade alternative to a relatively new machine, I mean, it's kind of setting me up for a fail anyway. I've tried about three or four different recipes now, and none of them have worked, and they leave a very filmy residue on the inside of the machine, which you then have to kind of get in there and clean off and it coats some of the dishes and the cups and stuff in it. It's just not designed to work with a natural homemade dishwasher tablet, I'm figuring. So I basically made them into little tablets so that they'd fit in the tablet section of the dishwasher. I might just have to wash a few more things by hand using my Ecova refill washing up liquid. That's the moral of that story. I have to say, overall I feel like there were more successes than failures and mostly just Lessons learned. It is interesting, especially when you're doing a whole month focusing on plastic. 
I mean, I found this since going zero waste, you do become very aware of just how much trash there is on the streets, how much rubbish there is sort of floating around everywhere. An example was when I went down to Cornwall on the train, the family sitting behind me, I think it was a mother and two daughters, <sighs> boy, did they leave a lot of rubbish behind. I've never seen such messy seats. I sort of peered around afterwards and it was littered on the floor with plastic wrappers, newspapers everywhere, water bottles, empty food cartons, and they just like left it on the train. Um, so I was a bit like, what? Especially when <laughs> it started like creeping it into my foot area as well as the train moved, some of it started rolling into my general vicinity. I was like, oh God, I'm going to have to deal with this now. I was actually staying for about a week with family in Cornwall. My husband and I went down to stay with some family down there. And um, there was definitely a lot more plastic than what I'm used to. So things like plastic water bottles, like large ones, the fizzy water and I don't find myself getting frustrated with the family members at all it's more the uh, companies that have decided to use that material in the first place and a prime example was a plastic water bottle that was recyclable but the company had then chosen a label made out of a different plastic that isn't currently recyclable and you think well, why didn't you choose one that is recyclable if you're going to choose a plastic at least choose one that's going to be recyclable especially large supermarkets who have the resources to make these changes so again i'm really pleased i did plastic free july for the second year running if you gave it a go let me know how you got on in the comments if you have any suggestions for alternatives or you know of a bio d refill gotta be one out there it's london come on um then please let me know in the comments if you haven't already subscribed i'd love it if you did click that red subscribe button it'd be nice if you stuck around and if you liked this video please hit the thumbs up thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one